that is sample therapy. Okay. Um, it's, I'll show you if you like. Absolutely. I'll pick up the, the thing and I'll, I'll let yeah. you see. It. Yeah. So this is a sand tray. So you know what I'm talking about. And just to, I'll put my hand in there so you get a sense of the size of it. Yeah. And these are the symbols. And if we were to talk about this, I think maybe a better way might be to say symbol therapy, if you like. Right. Because it's more about symbols than it is about the sound. And I'll just let you see the rest of the sound play room there. And go back to square one. <laughs> and the idea is that we'll say I, I'm depressed and I go to see, we'll say a therapist. And the therapist has looked at their unconscious and the therapist has the capacity to hear me, to understand, to if you like, to feel with me for whatever I'm talking about. So in this environment, which is um, confidential, I know it's going to be, I begin, I trust the, the guy I'm sitting with or the woman I'm sitting with, and I start talking to them. And just, this is with any therapy, gradually, I will talk about things that I have been unable to talk about before. Mm. And often the energy around this is shame. Now, it's not shame that I've done something bad, yeah. but actually shame that I feel so deeply about the loss of something. It could be the uh, death of someone close to me or the end of a relationship or the fact that I'm being bullied or uh, many different things. Uh, but the, the shame comes from the sense that I, I, I'm, I shouldn't be feeling like this about, mm. about this. And in classical Jungian analysis, that the first step is actually called confession. Okay. Where you're actually acknowledging to someone that you have a problem and what's around. So in that space, I will gradually talk to that person, talk a bit more openly, and eventually I will talk my way to the point, the, the issue that's the real issue for me. And I can't look at that on my own because there's too much uh, emotion associated with it. But when I'm in this space with this other person, the emotion is, if you like, shared. Mm. And so it's not as it, it often comes up with in my work that someone will talk about the death of a parent and it could be 20 years ago. And it is clear that at the time, the loss of that person was so intense for them that they couldn't experience it. Can you understand that? Yeah. This, this, the, the losses would just overwhelm them. So mm. they don't experience it. it. And gradually over the space of a year, it gets pushed into the background and it's gone. And then they say to you, life would never be the same since I lost my mother or my father or my brother or sister. And it's because they have not dealt with the pain. Yeah. The, the real, the, 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 the right way, if you like, is to acknowledge the pain and to celebrate because whatever has happened has happened. That's life. People die, you know, and if we are to lose our parents, they have held something for us. We have to acknowledge in ourselves what they held for us, because often uh, there's a real sort of if you're if your parent held a lot for you of various positive qualities, you have to own these for yourself. Mm. And that's part of the struggle of dealing with the, the grief. But um, anyway, getting back to the sound play. So you're in this um, relationship with the person sitting on the chair and you, you start talking about things that you don't normally talk to. You feel safe. You feel it's okay to share with this person. And then uh, we'll say you decide to make a, a picture in the sand. Now, the idea here is that you look around the shelves and you see these lots and lots of objects from all over the place representing everything and symbols are the language of the unconscious so you the, the unconscious is driving you to make a picture in there to speak so you use the you use you're drawn to these objects you put them in the tray and you're actually the unconscious is putting out a story mm. about what's going what's going on in your unconscious and you don't understand it at the time you do it, 
you just pick it i'll pick this object because it's blue yeah or, and with that object i like this object there'd be various reasons why you have put those particular objects in the tray but it is a story from the unconscious and the next thing you're going to ask me is about interpretation and yeah. this is a really important thing and the, the therapist doesn't interpret for two reasons one of them is well i know a lot about what these symbols can mean i don't know what it means for a particular person at a particular moment and the same symbol could mean something different tomorrow i will have a general idea and when we look back at these things it can be very clear what the, what, what it's all about but in this moment i don't know really what it's fully about mm. and so if i was giving an opinion i couldn't expect to be really accurate and secondly even if i did know exactly what it meant why has the has the person put it out there in symbol form it's because they're not ready to talk about it at the fully conscious level right but once they have expressed it like this the emotion of it is diffused and they could come back the next week and they mightn't tell you exactly what they've done in the tray but they'll, they'll they'll be talking about what was done in the tray last week okay can you understand that yeah um